Hey, welcome back to Baird's Quid. On this channel, we simplify educational tech for you using the iPad. In today's session, I'm gonna show you how to create an online test using Google Forms. Go ahead and open up your browser and type in Google Forms. I'm gonna to go to Safari here on the iPad and I'm gonna type in Google Forms and just press search. So go ahead and click on the first result. And this will open up uh, google.com and you can see here docs, sheets, slides and forms. We're going to start off forms today. So go to Google Forms. It's personal. So I'm just going to click on the personal um, account here and I'm already signed in here. So that's uh, perfectly fine. You can choose a template or you can use a blank form and there's no harm in choosing a template because you can edit it. I'm going to go ahead and choose a blank form. And then from here, once it loads up, I'm going to go to, that's fine. I'm going to go here to the settings cog. Okay. So click on the settings wheel and we're not going to do general or presentation. We're going to go to quizzes. We're going to create a quiz. Okay. So make this a quiz. So you can check mark this, make this a quiz. And then it says release mark immediately after each submission or later after manual review. We can release the answers straight after each submission. Okay. So as a student fills up this quiz, they'll get an immediate response. It says here, respondents can see missed questions, correct questions, and point values. Because it's a quiz, we do want students to see the missed questions, the correct answers, and then the point score as well. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's give this form a title. I'm just going to call it Fractions 101, 202, 101, and we'll call this Unit 1, okay? You can give a form description. You can go ahead and copy and paste from your unit planner. I'm just going to say here, I'm going to say all operations with fractions. Okay. And I can say there plus minus. Before we set the questions, it may be useful to add a resource where students can go back and review the content before they start doing the quiz. Nowadays, if we're doing online distance learning. There may be a student or two who are asynchronous and they haven't, you know, joined the WebEx or the Zoom session that we had on a particular lesson. So they've missed out on some of the key concepts. So what I like to do here is add a video link, okay, to the concepts that I'm teaching so they can review it before they do the test. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and add a video. You can add a video straight from YouTube. So I'm going to quickly go to my channel and just find the video that I want to uh, upload for fractions if I type here fractions okay I want to grab this video here so let me just copy the URL and then I can go back so I can type in the URL here yeah, that's exactly the one I want and then press select. So now that video is going to be embedded as a resource for the students to watch, you know, before they're doing uh, their fraction quiz. And I can give an instruction and I can say here. So since I started the form with question one, you can see that this is underneath question one. All I need to do is just drag and drop this above question one and I can move that around. Okay, so there's no harm in you adding things at the end of the quiz saying, oh, I really want you to add another question. You can add your questions and you just move, hold this handle down and just move things around. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a question one then. So question one. Okay. And so this is going to be a multiple choice question. Uh, option one. I'm going to add another option. And then here I'm going to say, it's one hole. The answer key, I'm going to go here to the answer key. I'm going to say that's a one mark question. You can make it a five mark question, make it a 10 mark question. That's a one mark question for me. And then you need to click on the right answer. So here I'm going to click on three quarters. That gives the right answer. And I can also give some answer feedback here. And I can say that for the correct answers, the feedback, I want to say, well done. And for the incorrect answer, I'm just going to say, Okay, and let's save that. With the feedback, okay, you can also link to a video or resource that you think might be useful for that student. So again, if I go back here and I edit this, I wanna give some feedback to that student. I can type in here, let's just say adding fractions. Add this math antics video for um, adding fractions because that student might be struggling. If the student gets incorrect, they can go ahead and look at that resource. So that was multiple choice. Um, let's add another question here. So we'll go to the add button. We'll add another question. 
question two will use a drop down menu okay question mark and here I'm going to use a drop down okay so drop down option one for my drop down I'm going to say option two I'm going to say option three option four denominator or denomination let's call it denomination okay and then what we can do with the answer key we can say that's a one mark question and I'm going to select the numerator to be my right answer and then I'm also going to give some feedback for the incorrect answer I'm going to say better luck next time for the correct answer I'm just going to say here top job so I can continue to add questions question three we can do a short answer or a long text form so the question should be something like I don't know Sally a question mark and then what I want to do is I don't want to do multiple choice I want to do like a short answer and I want them to I could right here show you working out and then in the short answer they'll have to short shots working out now because this is a short answer I am still looking for a particular answer yeah so for the answer key the correct answer we're going to add the correct answer here it could be four twelfths okay we can add another correct answer. So what if they simplify the answer and they don't say four twelfths, but they say, you know, one third. So we can say here one third. I'm going to give a point score here of, let's say two. It's a word problem. Get rid of this correct answer. The correct answer is four twelfths or one third. What I can do here is I can say mark all other answers as incorrect. Okay. And give feedback. I can just say here, well done. Okay. So now you can give word problems, you can give multiple answers. This is fantastic because you can mark all other answers as incorrect and the correct answers here would be would be perfectly fine here. Let's add a fourth and final question. This time we're going to do a checkbox. It's not a trick question. It could be, um, we're going to say that this is a checkbox and we're going to say option one, Monday, option two of course tuesday and it auto selects it option three wednesday option four thursday friday saturday or sunday now answer key this is is a bonus question it's a five mark question okay and for my answer key all of my answers are correct so there's no wrong answer it's a bonus question here okay and for the feedback i'm going to say Now, since I didn't use a template, I want to go here and change up the theme. So let's click on the theme button and maybe I want to change this up to have red background. Okay. Uh, the font, I want a playful font. And for the header, I can choose an image. Okay. Let's go down here. What do we have? Let's grab this one here. Insert for my header. So I think I'm happy with that. I've done my customization. What I want to do next is I want to click on the eye symbol here just so that I can preview uh, the quiz. Okay, so I'm going to go click here. It's going to open up the quiz. There's a video link. It says, please watch before starting the quiz so they can review the concepts. Then going down here, it says, add the following fractions. I think it's two quarters. What's the top part of the fraction called? The top number. Um, Sally ate four pizzas. I'm going to say that that's a third. And then what day on Saturday let me submit this and then it says view your score because remember we said immediate feedback so I can say view your score and then it tells me here oh I've got two out of nine points and it tells me which answers are correct and which are incorrect so here look at this it says add the following fractions a quarter and two quarters and I said it's two quarters and it says it's incorrect the correct answer is three quarters and then it gives me some feedback better luck next time and it shows me this video I can click on the video to go and learn that concept so that's our quiz um, what's fantastic here is first thing first we should actually go and name this form there we go because we gave the form a title up here okay it's taken that title and is given it as the form name okay which is fantastic so let's go back to settings we want to collect students emails 
we want to limit them to one response. We don't want students to keep going back and doing the test again and again and again. So we're going to limit it to one response. You might want to, uh, depending on you know what your policy is on retakes and so on and so forth. I think it's better to do one response and then you can review that and then send out another uh, quiz um, later on. So respondents can edit after submission. No, we don't want them to edit after submission and then see summary charts and text responses. I think we're going to leave it to that because we have in the quiz section said that students can see missed questions, correct answers and the point value immediately after they submit the test. So let's go back here and press on save. Make sure you press on save. Otherwise, it's not going to save uh, that information. OK, I'm happy with this. What do I do with it? I want to send it out to my students. So I can go over here and I can go to the link. And what I want to do is I want to shorten the URL. OK, so when you shorten the URL, it becomes more manageable for you to now copy and paste this wherever you want to send it to students. So I'm going to copy that. So typically I would share that in my Google Classroom and set it as a scheduled task for my students to complete. Now, uh, I'll just copy that and click that off. You can see here the responses come straight away as well. So I can see individual responses. I can see the questions. Uh, and select which question I want to see for the responses. Okay, so for example, question one, I can see what's going on here, who's responded and what they've said. I can see the summary and I can see an individual response as well. In addition to looking at the responses, Google also creates a spreadsheet or a Google Sheets where you can go and look at all the collected data. So if you click on this little green icon, it says create a new spreadsheet. So we can go ahead and create that. So we can open it down here. And this is the spreadsheet with all the data collected from all the participants that have responded to this form or this quiz. And then you can go ahead and look at the email addresses, look at the scores. You can highlight what you want to do with that information and then go and accordingly respond to your students uh, and maybe give them another test or give them some written feedback. What I'm going to do in the next video, I think, in part two is show you how you can do automated uh, certificate responses. OK, so people have done the quiz. And what you want to do is you want to send out a certificate for all participants who have completed the quiz. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.